Today, we have a special uh, Q&A webinar with uh, Mr. Doctor. Do you have any titles, Kevin? Uh, I don't. No, I'm, you don't. Mr. Casual. Mr. Casual. <laughs> I have to rename you <laughs> on the screen. All right, so we have uh, Kevin King as a guest. And uh, now, Kevin, could you give us a short over overview of what you are doing right now in Amazon space? I know that a lot of people uh, got to know you one, two, three years ago. You were very active, appearing everywhere. And now you are exclusively coming just to Orange Clicks channel. Yeah, you're one of the only ones that I've done. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, for, was it 2018, 2000, and part of 2019, I did uh, 30 some odd uh, live events and a lot of virtual summits. Uh, that's, uh, I enjoy doing that. I enjoy uh, helping people and giving back. Uh, but uh, right now, you know, obviously with COVID, uh, that's, not too much that's happening, but the uh, the virtual summit stuff, I'm not doing nearly as much anymore because I'm super busy with uh, several uh, of my Amazon businesses. I've got two brand new ones. I have my old ones that are uh, just chugging along and then kind of on, on autopilot and check in on, but I've got two brand new ones that are uh, have a heavy dose of uh, funding behind them. So uh, it's quite, uh, and, and they're exploding and they're doing very, very well. One of them may hit uh, $20 million uh, in his first eight months or so. Um, so uh, it's keeping me busy between that. The, it's three of them, actually. And each one has different partners and different people. And so I'm working. Uh, it's like I just got up, just had my breakfast. It's one o'clock here in, uh, in Texas, but uh, I don't get up to about 12 usually because I'm, I'm, I'm working Asia time. So uh, I work to about 3 a.m. Texas time so that I can correspond with Europe in the morning and Asia in the afternoon. And because uh, I got partners and business in, in all, all three of those continents. All right, cool. Before I forget, everyone who is watching, don't forget to subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel of Orange Click because here we talk with different Amazon experts and uh, software creators. And also when you subscribe, click the notification bell as well. And uh, very often people are asking these beginner questions related, well, not beginner, but uh, related to the beginning of Amazon journey. And I know that Kevin is... Uh, amazing in that he teaches a lot how to choose products and how to find them how to source them so let's see someone says finding products and how to avoid manu manufacturers taking your idea is uh, that person's challenge i think we were asking what is your challenge so how to make sure that manufacturers are not stealing your idea yeah you can't really unless unless you're a big company and you do a lot of legal documents in chinese that have certain requirements of the, the local county or district uh in in and in documents and it's it's really not worth it um i mean it, it's going to happen uh unless you're apple or you're someone like that that really control tightly controls the you know nike or apple and one of those big guys that you can afford to tightly control the entire supply chain it's very difficult i mean if it makes you feel comfortable you can do do some different documents, you know, like in the freedom ticket, I talk about uh, some of those and we give some examples, but that's, it's only worth the paper it's printed on. Um, it's, it's some, it just comes down to trust a lot of times. So, um, I mean, you can patent your ideas in the United States. You can, uh, you can do trademarks and you can get some limit. You can protect yourself somewhat, like if you're selling in the U S or in Europe. Uh, but if, they're, if they're going to knock it off, they're going to knock it off. Uh, and it may not be them. It may be their brother's cousin, uh, at a different factory. So, um, there's not a whole lot, honestly, that you can do. And uh, is it correct uh, website address, freedomticket.com? Uh, yeah, that's that's correct. All right. So, yeah, visit uh, Kevin's uh, course where he teaches you all from A to Z how to start Amazon business. And uh, I see that we have already a few questions coming in. Is Amazon private label still viable? No, don't do it. Run as fast as you can away from it. Uh, you're wasting your time. Uh, yes, it's it's very very viable. Um, a, a lot of people think, uh, oh, there's the only one making money is Amazon, and sometimes that's true in the beginning. But no, Amazon private label is better than ever right now. Um, the, is it easy like it was four or five years ago? No. It, is it competitive in some niches? Absolutely. Can you get can you get your ass handed to you on a platter? Yes, you can. But if you do this properly and you do the research properly and you come into it with the proper funding, uh, then and that doesn't mean millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars, but proper funding for whatever you're going to sell, then yes, it's very, very doable. And it's only getting better. Um, I've got products right now, just by example, I have a product that's a seasonal product. 
Uh, it's actually calendars, like you hang on the wall is, is the, the product. I've been selling them for years, but we just listed them on Amazon. Uh, most de December, late November, December is a big, big season for those. That's when you sell the bulk of it. But I just listed those on Amazon uh, a month ago and they're already selling with no PPC, with no, uh, uh, um, no launch, no nothing, already selling close to a thousand bucks uh, a day. Uh, so where else can you do that? Uh, nowhere. Uh, so if you pick the right products and do it right, it's absolutely a good opportunity. Um, as far as saturated, um, yeah, some niches are saturated, um, but that doesn't mean you can't compete if you differentiate. If you're just doing a Me Too product and just finding something on Alibaba and sticking your name on it and label, good luck to you. Uh, but you got to differentiate and you got to come up with something slightly different, new and a different twist and different marketing um, uh, way to market it. And you can do very well. All right. Another question is from LR Videos. If you have a product that is doing well, after some time you have copycats and you decide to improve your product, when would you use your same listing and take advantage of your reviews, even if it is not the same product? And when do you start a new listing? So um, well, it depends on the, on the reviews and how good your reviews are. If your reviews are below a four star, you might consider starting over. But if they're four star above, uh, you could come out with a new and improved version uh, and add it as a variation. That way you can benefit from some of those those existing reviews. All right. We have another question. What is the difference between FBA and FBM regarding the profit? Typically, FBA is higher profit. It uh, depends on the cost, though. I mean, you can make higher profit on FBM. If you're selling jewelry, you know, something really, really light, it's only a few ounces, uh, you know, 100, 200 grams or something, you may be able to do it FBM a lot cheaper. So just stick it in a little envelope and mail it out for a dollar twenty postage versus Amazon might charge you three, four bucks or something to, f to feel fulfill that uh, if you're not in the uh, small and light. Um, <clears throat> versus, but on the flip side, you know, something that weighs a pound, two pounds, three pounds, FBA is typically going to be uh, cheaper. Uh, and people trust FBA more. And when it says it's shipped by Amazon, there's people that trust it more. But in today's world, you've got to do both um, because with all the problems that Amazon's having, the growing pains, the out of stock, the new limitations, you really need to be able to do both. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Susan is asking what system you need to sell on Amazon. Probably she's referring to retail arbitrage, wholesale, I can imagine. Yeah, there's there's a lot of different ways to sell on Amazon. Like like Augustus was just saying, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, affiliate marketing, drop shipping, um, private label, um, wholesale. There, there's tons. The, the one of all the different options that are out there, uh, the 9, 10, 11 different ways you can make money selling on Amazon, the, pr the most profitable one is private label. It also oftentimes takes the most money to get started. But it's also can be the most profitable, and it's the it's really one of the only ones that you can actually sell for a big amount of money later on. I mean, you can sell any business, but private label ones in particular uh, are where the biggest money's at and the biggest opportunity is. All right, uh, Yakov wants to know how do I know if the supplier I'm talking to is a, a factory or it's some kind of agent or broker? Um, one you can ask them. One you can Google them. Um, one you can run a uh, you can hire a company like a uh, top win or Asia inspections to do an inspection on the person or the factory for a hundred bucks or so. Uh, but just because someone you're not dealing directly with the factory, that doesn't, that's not always bad. There's trading companies and there's some YouTube videos and some people out there say you shouldn't deal with trading companies. And, and that's actually not true. Uh, there's a lot of times a trading company actually can, can be t totally fine to deal with. Um, a lot of these factories don't actually have, English speaking people, uh, or they don't have export licenses or something. So there's nothing wrong with dealing with a, a trading company uh, as long as you're getting a fair price and they're taking care of you. Okay, there is a question. Do you source from India or other countries? I wonder how the answer would help the person <laughs> if you are sourcing. <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't source right now from India. I've been to India, uh, but I have, I, I have products that come out of Malaysia, out of, uh, uh, we just have five containers on their way right now from Vietnam of some products um, and China, Hong Kong um, and, and Europe and the US. And would you, for the beginners, would you still suggest just to look at China? Uh, I wouldn't limit yourself to China. China is the, for a beginner, China is definitely easier than somewhere like India just because the systems are set up in China very well. The shipping systems, the logistics, the, the whole process is definitely easier. Uh, 
by sourcing in China. There's a lot more op lot more stuff you can find in China, but India is, is great for some stuff too. Um, uh, but it, it can be a, a little bit more challenging for, for a new person just because the, the wheels are not as greased as they are in China. All right. Uh, there is a question about, can we speak about attribution in parents and child variants? Keyword relevancy. Uh, yeah, keyword relevancy is, is very critical right now. And the category that you're in can, will determine the, the relevancy of your keyword. So you could have something that you think is totally relevant uh, for, for your product. And if you're in the wrong category, you're not going to show up very much uh, for both PPC and for uh, organic search on that. So you got to you got to make sure you're in the right category. And there's some keyword relevancy that crosses over categories. Like there's some categories that share different keyword relevancies, but then there's some that they're totally different. Um, so that's that's very important. As far as attribution and parents and child variants, uh, I think you're talking about um, attribution is uh, like when you're driving outside traffic, usually that's what attribution means, unless you mean something else. Um, that's, uh, that's tags uh, where you're attributing the source of that traffic, but I'm not sure what you're referring to there. Um, actually, uh, let's uh, talk about your one of the recent products uh, for Amazon sellers, which is Product Savants, right? Could you give us an overview? What is it for, and uh, what do you help Amazon sellers with that? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, Product Savants is it's not for new sellers, so uh, it's only for experienced sellers. But one of the biggest pain points that a lot of people have when selling on Amazon is is like some of the questions you've seen already is how to find a find a product to sell. What's a good opportunity? And then once you found a good opportunity, finding a, a good factory that can provide this to you at a good price, it's sourcing, sourcing basically. So those are two of the big pain points a lot of people have and can take a lot of time. So that's what Product Savants does is it takes that pain point out. Um, I'm partners with Steve Simonson on that uh, project. He's been sourcing out of uh, China for 20, 30 years or something. He's got a big team over there. Um, they're very good at, uh, at sourcing, uh, and I'm, I'm pretty good at finding product opportunities. So as I'm looking for things for myself, uh, I might find something that just doesn't fit. It's a good opportunity to sell, but it just doesn't fit into my brand. And so rather than uh, just let it sit there, um, I'll, I'll give that over to Steve. They'll, so, they'll find a the, the good factory, and then we package that together, and we say, Here, here's, a, here's a product and, and uh, the, the source. Uh, here's all the keywords. Here's everything you need to know to rank it. Here's its history. Here's all the data. It's like a 15-page report, but it's only for uh, – it's sold out right now. So even if you want to be in it, uh, there's no space. Um, but it, it's only for experienced sellers, people pretty much doing over $50,000 a month. I want to sell a bundle of products sent as a bundle to FBA. I can ask for the GTIN exemption, but it, in that case, I do not have the option of variations. Question, would you try to get EAN, EAN UPS for the bundle? Is that easy, possible, any tip? Um, yeah, you could try to get a, a UPC uh, for, for that bundle. Uh, just make sure that bundle is something that's yours. If you're selling, if it's a Crest toothpaste and a, uh, crest a, a toothbrush you actually it's against amazon's rules to create a bundle of that with a different upc because it's not sold that way by the manufacturer but if it's your product um you could get a upc uh for it um if you want to add variations that would be the workaround for sure upcs i don't recommend using these services like speedy barcodes and these cheap ones you get off of ebay anymore i mean you could do that if you want to but uh you're just asking for trouble you really need to go to gs1 um and it um gs1 in the u.s is kind of expensive, but you can go to GS1 uh, UK. The guys over at Helium 10 did a big blog on that uh, not too long ago where walking through the whole process and you can uh, get it a lot cheaper that way. Next question, using relevant keywords in the listing. For example, home decor item. Do you use home decor high search volume keyword or is it too broad so it can bring your conversion down? Now, typically, when I launch a new product, I start with mid to lower range keywords. So like the biggest, the most high search volume keywords typically um, don't have the best conversion rates um, because they're uh, more general. People might search for a high volume and then they narrow it down. So I always start with uh, the mid range and, and the lower range keywords. Those high range, uh, high search volume keywords I will have in the listing. And if I can squeeze in as the title somehow, that's that's great too. Uh, but I don't target those in the beginning. I target um, smaller keywords. In the pandemic time, do you recommend any year freight shipping? 
Well, air freight shipping costs have come down quite a bit. Back in March and April, they were through the roof. Uh, they're still a little bit high in fourth quarter. They're always higher. Um, I don't really ship much by air freight uh, just because of the cost. Um, I mean, if you got something really light uh, and small, but I, I do almost uh, everything by, by sea uh, as we're shipping containers. But um, air freight for me is more for just samples um, because it does add, it does speed everything up, but the costs are still uh, higher than they were uh, this time last year. So um, I, as far as a sh uh, who to use for air freight, they're all relatively the same, unless someone's got a contract. Like I know like the guys at Unicargo, they had a contract uh, back during the pandemic with FedEx that when the rates were going up to like $20 a kilo or something crazy, they, they could still do it for six because they had a contract. So you could find someone that has something like that. Um, but I don't have a specific person to recommend. 300 row is asking, hi, Kevin, do you predict some disruptions with ABA in Q4? Should we consider a backup plan with 3PL and FBM? Yes, uh, yes and yes. Uh, I expect uh, there to be some uh, some um, long delays in getting things checked into Amazon. As most of you know, there's now if it's a brand new product, you're limited to 200 via FBA. So if you're launching a product that starts selling well, you're just kind of screwed uh, for the first couple months. Uh, you're going to have to temper it, or you're going to have to. That's another reason to go after smaller keywords in the beginning if if you can't do FBM. But everybody really needs to do set up FBM. And the problem now with FBM is even it's getting backed up. So I know it's like e-com fulfillment uh, out of Michigan, for example, I spoke to them a month ago or so, and they said it's taken them uh, nearly two weeks just to check in stuff. So if you send send something from your factory to them, they get it, that it, it, it sits there in a, in a trailer or on their dock or in their warehouse for almost two weeks before they can even process it to put it on their shelves to send it out. So it, it's across the board, um, it's a problem. Uh, so if you don't have a, a good 3PL, an FBM set up for fourth quarter, and you're hoping to do any kind of serious volume, you're you're in deep doo doo right now. Um, you need to have both, and the way you do that too on your listing, um, a lot of people don't understand how to how to do that. the The best way to do that is set up a listing, have the same product under both, so you don't set up two separate listings. You'll create your let's say you create your FBM listing first. You create your listing with your title, with your bullet points, with all your pictures, everything, and make it FBM. And then what you do is you go in and you, you select that in Seller Central, that item. You go into Seller Central inventory and you select that 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 FBM one. And over on the left-hand side where it says edit, there's a little pull down there. It says edit and close listing and it's got some other options on it. One of those options is, uh, is to create a different condition. And you want to choose create another condition. And when you tr choose that condition, one of the options is going to be uh, FBA. One's going to be like used or you know, use like new and something, but one of those is FBA. You choose that FBA option. You just give it a different SKU, SKU. You just give it a different SKU, uh, and then that's it. You hit submit, and then all is, uh, la la la. All of a sudden, you have a second listing, and they're completely tied to each other. So they share the same reviews. They share the same everything. You don't have to re-upload pictures or or title or any any of that kind of stuff. And then what happens is if you're selling, let's say FBA and you run out of stock FBA, it automatically, instantly just switches to your FBM. And then vice versa, if you have, as, as you're shipping FBM, your FBA stock gets checked in as soon as it's available again to ship, it'll automatically ship back to your FBA. And so it works very seamlessly. I've been doing that uh, since June with, with a couple products. Oh, we have a lot of questions more. So Alex is saying, nice to see you, Kevin. Thrasio is getting a lot of attention in in the US. Do you know any similar companies or teams in Europe or Asia? Um, I don't know any similar companies in Europe or Asia that are actually doing it. I'm sure there's there may be a few, but the bulk of the, most of these companies, even if they're based in Europe or Asia, they're gonna focus on the US market because that's the biggest market. Um, but yeah, Thrasio is is buying a lot of companies. Um, they're not the only one. There's there's several of them out there, and there's more. I just found saw another one uh, yesterday that I'm not heard of. Um, it, it's a big business, and that's why I was telling the person earlier, private label is the way to go because that people like Thrasio. If you if you get this off and running, you you may outgrow yourself. You may, you may outgrow too fast where it's beyond what you're capable of or hiring people or con the, the financial means that you can do. And that's where Thrasio will come in and they'll buy it off of you and give you a good, uh, a good multiple and put some nice cash in your pocket. 
Actually, I have a tip uh, in case some of the companies which are buying Amazon businesses watching this uh, webinar, please contact us and then we can uh, uh, refer you to the people like Alex and Alex, you can write to us. Maybe some of these companies will contact us and then we can connect you both. Uh, recently, I also remember I saw some companies selling uh, located in US. I think it's called Boosted Commerce or something like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but but I'm not sure if they're buying in Europe, but you can double but check. Thrasio, I know some of them do buy European companies uh you know i know some it's a little bit harder like german ones are a little bit harder for these guys there's a lot of rules and regulations so they'll choose in a u.s one over a, a, a european one usually just because it's easier uh and cleaner but if there's a good opportunity for someone that's selling in europe or J japan or asia they'll take a look at it all right nila nilani wants to know do you see any trends for products or niches with COVID 19 hand sanitizer yeah hand sanitizer. don't sell hand sanitizer it's super saturated uh, but no there yeah there's a lot the, the big ones are the uh you know especially back at the beginning of the pandemic some of these and some of these will carry on but uh actually uh amazon actually came out uh, back in july one of their product development guys actually came out with a list and he actually said this is you know this one's up this much this one's up this much but stuff, anything to do with uh, beauty at home, like a lot of women couldn't go to the nail salon or people couldn't cut their hair. So any kind of products around around that kind of stuff. I know my wife spent a few thousand bucks buying uh, every kind of nail, nail press on and nail clipper because she couldn't go to the nail salon. So she could do it herself. Any kind of home gardening type of stuff, any kind of home repair type of stuff. Uh, a lot of people are at home, they, they're, they're fixing things up. Those kinds of things uh, are doing well. Sports, uh, people that can't go to the gym, uh, so any kind of home uh, workout equipment. Th there's quite a few uh, things that are, are doing well. Cooking stuff is doing well. I mean, obviously, ones like travel are, are, are way down, um, but there's there's tons of opportunity out there. We have, uh, I don't know, tons of questions, so I'm will be jumping f uh, not through all of them. So. Susan wants to know, how do you manage everything yourself? Are you working really yourself on all your Amazon businesses, Kevin? Um, I, I do a lot, but I have partners that do, you know, like in one of, two of my companies, I have partners that handle the, the factory side of things. Um, I, we have one VA that does some social media for those companies, but then that's, but everything else uh, I pretty much do, but I, I job out. So I, I'll hire people or I'll partner with people uh, to, to, to do some of the stuff, uh, but no, I don't have any employees or any direct VAs that report directly to me. And classical question, what is the minimum capital do you think you need to start private label? The more the better, uh, but I would I would not advise anybody to start with less than $5,000. You'll hear a story of someone that says they started with 1500 and and now they're doing a million dollars a year, and that may be true, but typically there's more to the story. Uh, 1500 that's what they might have started with, but two weeks later, they put something on their credit card, their uncle gave them something. Maybe they got lucky and their factory gave them credit. Uh, there, there's more to the story, but I would not start with less than 5,000. My most recent company started with 1.1 million. Um, so um, that, that, uh, that <clears throat> yeah, so it can run the range. I wouldn't say you need, you know, million dollars, but 5,000, 10, 20,000 would be better and don't spend all that, you know, 50,000 is even better, but don't spend all that in, in, in one product, you know, but uh, you're going to need, if you're successful, you're going to need money. Uh, and I mean, you know, once you're up and running, there's people that can help you people, uh, like sellers funding and people, um, different, different Amazon lending. And there's a ton of different things, but if you're going to avoid that, uh, cause those cut into your margins quite a bit, you want to avoid that. So, um, five to 20,000 would be the, would be a comfortable start to get your feet wet. Uh, do you see any other sales e-commerce channels appearing like Amazon in your view? No, no there'll never be another one like Amazon. Um, Walmart, Shopify, you know, Facebook, e-commerce, all that stuff is is a, is 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 pennies uh, compared to Amazon. Amazon is so dominant. Unless Amazon gets broken up uh, legally, you know, by governments. Um, or just implodes for some reason, there's nobody that's going to take over Amazon. There are other channels, you know, and you can string together, you know, a bunch of other channels, a Walmart, a Shopify, a, um, you know, some of the, some of the others out there. And, uh, but you're still not even going to equal what Amazon does. And so I, I 
recommend people really focus on Amazon in the beginning. If you want to diversify off, that's great. And people always say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And um, that's that's true. Um, but those other baskets are pretty small. So if, if you're selling on Amazon and all of a sudden uh, you lose your Amazon account, you're going to depend on your Shopify, uh, you're still going to be screwed uh, because it's just not going to be much. And it's a whole different business model too. I mean, there's people that make money on Shopify doing drop shipping and um and there's a whole different model over there, and some of those people do well, um, but it's it's a whole different game. Matt is asking, how much is your course? Earlier, we mentioned those who tuned in later. There is a freedom ticket course where Kevin is teaching everything, and Ahmed would like to know what is the price of it. It's free. Uh, it's freedom ticket. Uh, I mean, you can go there and you can pay for it. Nine hundred ninety-seven dollars, I think, if you want to, but. Uh, you don't need to do that. It, it, uh, I, I made a partnership with Helium 10 software a year ago and Helium 10, uh, if you sign up for their monthly, uh, you know, they have software that helps you find, do all the keyword research and ads and the whole nine yards if you're not familiar with them. But if you have their their monthly membership, which I think is uh, 97 a month, I believe, and I'm, I'm sure uh, um, Augustus may have a code or something that can help you uh, save a little bit on that if you want to. Uh, you get freedom ticket for free. It, it doesn't cost you anything. Yeah, check the link below. There is a link to Helium 10. All right, we still have a lot of questions and they are not reducing. As for your experience, what counts to get ungated for food products? I've got, it's been a while since I got ungated for food. Um, I just had to, I was selling some barbecue here in Texas, a barbecue sauce here in Texas. We're known for our, our barbecue and there's a place called the Salt Lick that uh, has a really nice uh, barbecue sauce. And so this was like four years ago. And so I had to get ungated for that, but I just had to show some receipts. Um, so typically, I, I, typically you just going to need either some, some big receipts that shows you bought 10 or more of these um, from like a, a distributor or in my case, you know, I went down to this barbecue place and they, they had a, like a little wholesale account and they made me a little invoice that sh and that's how I got ungated for it. Uh, baby products and a few of those may have some additional rules, but for, for general food stuff that it wasn't too hard. Do you have any idea when Amazon will remove the new shipping limit for 200 units? I, I have a feeling it's never going to go away. Um, I, I, my hunch is it's going to increase. Um, you know, I, I think this is something Amazon put in place, obviously, because they, they couldn't keep up with the demand. But I think what's happened is there's a lot of people that have been watching YouTube videos and taking courses and they're ordering 500 or 1,000 uh, of, a, of a product that's just the same as 1,000 other products that are already on Amazon. They're shipping it in Amazon and they're not selling. Uh, they're selling five of them or 10 of them. And they're like, oh, this Amazon business is saturated and doesn't work. And that stuff's just sitting around Amazon's warehouse. It's just taking up space. And so I think they're going to modify this rule. I think like right now, if you're selling FBM, I have a product that was selling 400 units a day, FBM, in June and July. And we put it into FBA in, in early August uh, is when we, we got it into FBA. And that we were still re limited to 200. And so it was it's kind of silly that, look, we this is proven to sell give us a higher limit. So I think there'll be some changes where if you have a history or maybe if you've been selling for six months or a year or some, some there, I think it's going to change a little bit where there's going to be some exceptions to the rule, but I don't see it going away ever. Okay. So we have more serious topic. What is the best techniques to rank these days? A he heavy PPC, lose money on your PPC uh, and for uh, uh, two weeks to two months, depending on your niche. Uh, and search find buy with rebates. Those are two. Those two in combination with each other. What is the best way to open secondary seller account for new brand legal way? Amazon allows that now. They didn't used to allow that, and you'd have to get special permission. As long as, but you can do that now. It's it's not a problem. As long as you have a separate bank account, a separate tax ID, and there's a good reason for it. Don't if you're selling sport sporting goods and you want to open a second seller account selling sporting goods, I don't recommend that. Even if it's a different bank and a different partner, uh, I would make sure you're in a different category just to make sure there's no ambiguity, <clears throat> and it's it, you can just do it. Um, just just be, be sure that everything is completely separate: separate email, separate bank account, separate EIN, separate partnership, separate type of product, uh, different type of product line. 
Meskik wants to know, can you recommend some strategies against Chinese hijackers, copycats, illegal practices, <clears throat> fake reviews? Um, yeah, the, the against copycats, <clears throat> I hear people always complaining that they've got copycat. People are copycat numbers or hijackers are on their listing. Usually copycats means you didn't differentiate your product. Your product's too easy to copy. Make your product not easy to copy, either with the packaging or by modifying the design. Illegal practices like fake reviews, I see a lot of people worrying about that. Um, it really only matters most when you first launch. Uh, so if you get attacked in those first 20, 30 reviews, it can hurt you. But beyond that, it's gonna ha if, if you're successful, you're gonna become a target. If you start, if you have a BSR below a thousand, you're gonna become a target. So the way to do that is to not t not go after those big products, to go after smaller products. But I see a lot of people um, claiming fake fake reviews when they're actually legit reviews. Just you have a shitty product, um, and, and so and then there's a lot of morons out there. There's a lot of people that are just just idiot customers. Some of these customers are just idiots. Uh, and you'll, you'll get that too. And so the best thing is just to answer those uh, comment there. Um, as far as the Chinese hackers, um, hijackers, uh, I mean, yeah, there's some stuff that you can do uh, in your product packaging. There's some tips that I give, like in the freedom ticket and stuff on that. It, that that's like a whole hour discussion there on, on depends on what they're doing. I see a lot of questions which are like an hour discussion. For example, Alisa, she uh struggles to find a profitable product and when she sum ups everything it, there is no profit so what kind of you know she's not sure how to proceed yeah that's the thing a lot of people don't factor in all their costs i mean they, you need to have on a, a product that sells l for less than a uh, hundred dollars really you need to have a, at least a, a, f a 4x markup uh, over your cost price so if, if your factory price is uh is five dollars at the bare minimum, you need to be able to price that at 20 bucks on Amazon and sell it. Ideally, even more. Uh, the, the higher that is, the better. Uh, I have one product, you know, that we that I sell, like these calendars, that our landed cost is $1.60, and we sell them for $19.95. So you can see that, that that markup there is like, what's that, 14, 15x. There's a lot of margin. Um, but I see people that source something for 5 bucks and try to s sell it for eleven ninety nine, and you're never going to make any money. Only what makes money is Amazon. And your shipping in your factory, uh, so you got to have those margins. And there, there's plenty of products that have that. You just got to find the right source, or you got to find the right product, uh, or you may be in a niche where some niches people um, there's so many new people entering it. They're all trying to sell a loss to get momentum and to get rank. That for you to even sustain in there is impossible. So it's look for look for a different niche. There's plenty of uh, good stuff out there. Plenty of good opportunities. Oops, you're mute. Uh, I can't hear you, Augustus. Um, there you go. <laughs> you hear me now? Yeah, I can <laughs> hear you now. All right. Do you need a rest, Kevin? No, no, or are you... no let's go. You're good. Okay, let's go. There is quite a specific question about electronic products. So the person is designing electric device, and after receiving cut drawings, what are the next steps in what order? Well, on, uh, if you've if you've done some CAD, uh, you should get a STL file or STP file off of that, and I would do a 3D printing. That's the next thing I would do uh, is is print that out, uh, find a company nearby to you uh, or someone that can do this and ship it to you, uh, and do a 3D model where it's, they'll print it, test it, make sure uh, you know it, uh, it, it, everything works okay, then make any modifications to the CAD. Uh, and then I would then after that you you're gonna do uh, it's kind of like a uh, if since it's electrical product you're gonna need to do um, uh, an actual working prototype. So your 3D printing depending on the size of it might cost you 20 bucks to 100 bucks, 150 bucks maybe depending on how big this thing is. Uh, but your electrical working units um, could cost you anywhere from 500 to 5,000 dollars for one that actually works. So like if it's got electrical, uh, like in the past, I saw I, I designed a, a Apple Watch charging dock that had uh, USB ports, it had a light in it, it had a speaker in it. And so to, to make my working prototype on that uh, was about 2,000 bucks. And so it's like they take they take a take all, all, everything and they they make it um but before they do that they got to do some of the molding too so you're gonna have some molding costs before they can do that then you're gonna check that make sure all that works and then that's when i would start doing your certifications and um 
uh, and all that kind of thing. Uh, your, as far as provisional patent, if you're confident uh, that this is going to move forward, you could do that at any point. Owen is asking uh, some explanation about new ROAS metric in Amazon advertising. And so, ROAS, good, mm -hmm. so ROAS is a return on ad spend. That's what that stands for. So that means if you spend a dollar on an ad, um, if you have a ROAS of one, that means you got a dollar back. So that's the same as 100% ACOST. So a ROAS of one is the same as 100% ACOST. So a ROAS of two would be the same as a 50% ACOST because that means you put in a dollar and you got $2 back. So two divided by one, uh, it's one is 50% of two, basically. Uh, so so in my case, I look for ROAS. Is, it depends on on the point of your product where you're at. When I'm first launching a product and trying to get position, I'll take a ROAS of one, uh, and sometimes even less, a 0.75, which means I'm losing serious money on every one of them. But I, I'm getting keyword data and I'm getting position. Once a product is up and it's onto page one, and I, I got some momentum going, I like that to be about two and a half or above uh, it, uh, for my margins. Um, that's like the bare minimum and that's only if it's a keyword i'm still trying to go after but ones that are, are sustained i like that i'd like to see that about a four uh which is basically a 25 percent a cost all right um sasha shapiro is asking i hear a lot of sellers talk about building a brand how do you pick additional products in the same sub niche do you compromise on hard competition and low search volume to launch um, do I compromise on hard competition and I don't understand do I compromise on hard competition and low search volume just to launch uh, oh you um, no I, I <clears throat> there's no point in launching just to launch uh, only launch if there's an opportunity Sasha uh, as far as building a brand um, building a brand can be good but building a brand is a long-term strategy when you're first starting on Amazon I don't recommend you actually unless you have a lot of money to start with, if you're coming in this with fifty, hundred thousand dollars and some experience and building a brand from out of the gate is a good idea. But if you're starting with five, ten, twenty thousand, just get up and selling. And then you can you can diversify that into a brand later. Um, and some of these companies like Thrasio that are buying, they don't give a shit if it's a brand or not. They don't care. Um, but someone off the street that's an investor that's got an SBA loan, they may actually want it to be a brand. So it depends on what your model is. And, and what you're going after. But as far as to how you pick additional products in that same sub niche, look for what's frequently bought together on your product. Look look um, what, what items are frequently bought together. Who's advertising on your product? If you are brand registered, you can go into the um, brand registry and you can get the demographics of your customers. And you can see, you can also see what, and brand analytics uh, and brand registry, you can see what else people buy with your product. So you can go in there, they give you this data now. Amazon does. So you can go in there and see that when they buy your uh, your hammer, a lot of people are buying uh, this particular screwdriver, this ASIC. Take a look at that and see what they're doing and see if that might be, there's a big enough opportunity there for you to add that into your into your brand. That, that's how I would do it. What is a personal opinion about outside traffic flow, like Facebook, for example? Um, I mean, any traffic is nice, but too much emphasis is put on that. Too many people say you need to build your audience on Facebook and Instagram and send traffic into Amazon. And um, I don't believe that. Uh, for most people, your Facebook or Instagram or social media traffic is going to be negligible. Unless you got a really, really deep down niche, it's not going to really help you too much on Amazon. Focus on Amazon first. There's, you should build a Facebook audience. You should build these social media channels. But if you're counting on that, to to help you rank on Amazon, uh, you should stop um, because um, most people it's not going to work. And you, if you have a, a Facebook audience of 500 people um, that you've built up, you're good luck getting five or ten of those people to buy your product um, unless it's like I said, unless it's super passionate niche that you just developed. But most people, that's not the case. So you need to focus on the traffic that's on Amazon. Amazon has so much traffic and there's so much data. Focus on maximizing what's already there. Then later on, worry about building out your Facebook and, and other stuff and, and using that as traffic. How to change variation theme and when it will be changed, will it affect ranking? I don't understand. Variation theme? theme. I, don't know. I don't understand what you mean. Theme. Mm -hmm. Variation. I don't understand. 
Okay, yeah, Argo, okay. if you can rephrase a question in uh, more popular using po more popular words, it would help Kevin. All right, you, Juan. Besides payability, Alta, Alibaba, pay later, post now. Any other similar sites where sellers can apply for capital and no credit checks? Easy to get money. Oh, it, if you're a U.S. citizen and you have a U.S. Amazon account, uh, companies like Sellers Funding uh, can, are, are Alta are good but you're saying besides uh those um the not that specialize in amazon there's three or four that specialize in amazon but the rest of them are ones like uh cabbage and blue vine and uh on deck and there's there's quite a few of those but they're more predatory lending the rates are quite a bit higher so uh i don't recommend those um as far as credit check all of them check your credit they just don't report it on your credit. That's, um, but they, they do usually want a credit score of at least 600 or 620 uh, and with no uh, write-offs and charge-offs and stuff. Um, and once you've been selling for a year um, and you're a U.S.-based account, um, Amazon will start to offer you loans typically. But they can they can be small and it's based on your past history. Um, but that's, that's pretty much uh, as far as large capital uh, everything's going to be based when they tie, tie it to your seller central account. It's all going to be based on your previous track record. So even though you may know you need more, they may not give it to you um, because they're all going to want to see what have you done uh, and, and project that into what could be the future, even though you think it could be different. So if you need large capital like that, you might be better off to get private people, um, private partners, friends, family, um, something like that. Ahmed would like to know how long to wait before start selling in Amazon Europe. Probably he means first to start selling in US and then when to move to Europe, I understand. So I would say if you're new and you start selling in the US before you go to Europe, probably at least a year. You need to maximize, don't don't spread yourself too thin. Maximize what the US has to offer. And as a new person, you're gonna have a lot to learn. But once you've mastered the, the US side and you know then expanding to Europe is gonna be is be fine. Uh, and easier for you, but you have to remember expanding from the U.S. to Europe is like starting another company. So you have to have funding. So if you started with five thousand dollars in the U.S., you're going to have to have another five thousand dollars or similar amount to start in Europe. So it's it's like you're going to be juggling uh, several different balls in the air as far as inventory and everything. So you may not be ready to do that in the beginning unless you're you're well funded. So, Kevin, you said earlier that it's not possible to make bundle with existing products. For example, if you do a, a gift basket with existing products. Yeah, Amazon doesn't. Uh, if it's a big brand names, like I, I gave that example of the toothpaste um, and the toothbrush, Amazon does not like that. It's actually against the terms of service. Um, but people do people do it? They do it and they get away with it. Um, you know, just people that make gift baskets of uh, different types of coffee or different type of candy bars and stuff. Um, but usually some of those get shut down. So just be aware that if you do that, you may be totally fine, but you, I, a few people complain and they, they, Amazon's going to come back and ask you, do you have permission to do this from these individual companies? And if you don't, uh, they may, they may take your listing down. They, they don't like that, but people do it all the time. Uh, Ghoul Farm is asking what could be a launching strategy in Q4? Unless you have a seasonal item, I wouldn't launch in Q4. Unless it's Christmas related, I wouldn't launch in Q4. It's going to be everything's going to cost you quite a bit more. The, the demand is up. Just to get ranked for a keyword, you're going to have to sell a lot more. You have to give away a lot more, do a lot more rebates. Advertising uh, costs are way up. So unless it's seasonal, um, I would not. I would not launch in Q4. Juan says that getting uh, he's getting requests from companies to buy their products or oh, their yeah to buy Juan's products wholesale what are the steps and what should we know when setting this up first make sure they're not Amazon sellers I get a lot of those too they're, they're just companies that sell on Amazon they're gonna compete against you so the number one thing is you're gonna have to make sure that there's no they're not allowed to sell on Amazon it has to be an exclusion to, to not sell on Amazon as far as setting up the MOQs that's up to you you know, whatever is most economical for you to ship. If they're ordering big amounts, it might be a full container. It might be a, a pallet amount. Um, that, that's up to you. As far as providing a product catalog, you just um, you can make one. A map policy is minimum advertised price. You would probably want to set that to uh, at least what you're selling on Amazon, if not a little bit higher. Um, and yeah, that's 
all that is you're on the right track there as far as MOQs and providing a product catalog. I mean, you can do a one sheet. You don't have to do a full blown catalog, but you can do a one sheet that has the UPC number, the size, the case quantity, uh, the weight of each case, um, the lead time, uh, some pictures of the, of the product, um, that kind of thing. It's it's pretty easy to do. And good news for those who are asking who, where to sell companies in EU. And Danny McMillan says Thrasio is buying EU companies. So it's yeah. good news. Yeah, they are. Technical question. How can some sellers appear in more than one category? Any trick? Uh, not anymore. Amazon does assigns that now. It used to be, used to be allowed two categories. And at one point, people were getting in three or four. But that's something that's based on your sales that Amazon will assign based on the algorithm. Um, there, there is a trick for that, but it's against the rules. So I don't want to talk about that. Vino wants to know how Kickstarter crowdfunding is important. Do you use Kevin for, for your product? No, those are, that's a whole different business model too. I mean, as far as launching on Amazon, Kickstarter and uh, any kind of crowdfunding, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, those can be great platforms, but most you have to understand that most of the people that are making money there are starting with a lot of money. They may say they need $100,000 to do their product. They already have a million dollars. They're just using it to to actually as an advertising vehicle. Um, so most of those guys that are successful are well-funded. And if, if you're not well-funded, you can still make that work. But remember that on Kickstarter, uh, only like 5% of, uh, of them ever actually make it. It's a 95% failure rate on Kickstarter. And the reason for that is most people don't, Kickstarter has an algorithm just act like Amazon. When you first launch on Kickstarter, there's certain things you got to do within a certain time frame to get to get ranking and to get up the up the up the charts there, and to have other people discover you. There's a whole ecosystem behind launching on Kickstarter, where it's not like I got a great idea. Let's put it on Kickstarter and people will find me. You got to build audiences. You got to send traffic to it. It's it's very a, a successful Kickstarter campaign or crowdfunding campaign in today's world. There's a very big science to to making it work. Um, and so I would be cautious on that um, unless you're well-funded. You need to already, have, if you're using Kickstarter crowdfunding, like, hey, I'm gonna do this and raise the hundred grand I need, I only got five grand right now, good luck to you. It's probably not gonna happen. Um, you, if, if you make it happen, you'll be one of the rare ones. Um, but th those are, but they can be great platforms. I mean, there's a lot of cool products that come out of those, but they're usually pretty well-funded already. Lily says, for the first product, which is arriving to US in late November, early December, would you suggest to send it to 3PL or directly to FBA, which takes less time to start selling faster? Um, well, in today's, and used to be sending directly to FBA would be cheaper and take less time. But in today's world, um, that may or may not be true. With Amazon, the check-in times, me personally, I always ship to a 3PL first. I I've never sent anything directly to FBA. I just don't like doing that <clears throat> because it opens up a can of worms with problems or you get problem products or, um, and now with the rules, since it's, you said it's your first product, you can't ship more than 200 anyway. Uh, so right now, if, if it's 200 and it's your first product and you ordered a thousand, you can't ship all thousand in Amazon anyway, even if you wanted to. So you're going to have to have a 3PL that's going to hold those and ship, ship in your first 200. Or if you're only ordering 200 or less, then you could ship it if you want to straight into FBA, that would be the cheapest and fastest in, in that case. But I still don't really recommend that. I just like to use a 3PL. When you mentioned FBM and FBA under the same listing with two ASINs, they automatically switch when FBA is out of stock, right? Or you will need manually monitor FBA status? Fully automatic while you sleep. You don't have to touch it. Make sure your customers don't sleep and buy from you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, or just okay, she is you or he is saying, or just to leave FBM FBA ASINs active so that FBA is out of stock and will kick in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what I do too is on my FBM, sometimes if um, I might price it a buck or two higher, uh, just so that um, people because I really want them to order the FBA because it's it's easier uh, and I make more money, so I might price the FBM a buck or two higher. Then, as I'm starting to run low on FBA, then I might lower my FBM back down. Um, but um, so that's how I, I kind of control the buy box. But typically, if they're the same price, FBA usually wins the buy box if, if they're the same price. But there are flukes. So that's why I sometimes raise the FBM a buck or two. 
Um, you already answered one question about external traffic. Uh, this question is which traffic source you prefer for ranking? I mean, for ranking purposes, the probably the best is is ManyChat flows through Facebook for for ranking purposes. Um, but you know, influencers and those kind of things um, typically are not very not not good at ranking. They're they're they're, they're nice for for brand awareness. They're nice for a few sales. But typically, to actually get rank, you need sustained selling for a sustained period of time to rank. And those typically don't do that. They might give you a little burst or a little uh, um, nice little hit. But for, for ranking, they're, they're not good. So the only one is, is Facebook advertising with ManyChat that really can sustain that over a period of time that you need. Do you have a brand ambassador or affiliate programs for influencers for your products? How did you set it up? Contracts and so on? Uh, yeah, we we do reach out to uh, to to uh, influencers uh, for some of our products. I have, I have a person that handles that. They will they will use different tools. We don't have them in an affiliate program. We we give them that option if they want to do that, but some of them don't want to do that. Um, but we we use tools. Uh, some people will email us directly. You know, they'll see your brand on Amazon or our website, and they'll they'll email us. But we take a look at at their engagement rates. So we'll use some some different tools out there that that uh, can give us engagement rates and audience insights and stuff to make sure because you might get a big affiliate that's uh, based in the UK, uh, big say you're selling beauty products and it's big uh, some some uh, model that's in the UK that's uh, pushing beauty products and you take a look at our audience on Instagram and you know it's got a million followers let's say, uh, but you take a look at the audience insights and 80% of those are not in the US they're in Europe or they're somewhere else to me that audience may not that that influencer is not going to be right for me because she's most of her audience is in it's not in the US so I have to take a look at out of those 200,000 it's still worth it because she thinks she's worth X amount of dollars because she's got a million followers make sure that they actually are targeting the right audience and then I look at engagement you know if, if they have a million followers on their and and they're putting out posts they're getting a you know, only 500 comments, that's a problem uh, on a million followers. You should be getting a, a one to five, a, a, ideally a two to 5% uh, engagement rate. And if they're not getting that, that means that audience is not very good. So there's there's lots of things that we do like that before we will work with an influencer, whether it's for free or, or for pay. All right, we have European question. Uh, Olivia is in Spain and would it be best to start a big business uh, in Spain or in Germany or UK or US because she can't find a good product to in, for, to sell in Spain. Hola Olivia, uh, es de mejor uh, de, uh, de com comenzar in, uh, probably in Germany is probably what I would recommend for you in Spain. Uh, Spain's a much smaller market so uh, since you're in Europe I would probably take a look at uh, Germany or the UK if, if you want to start off in Europe uh, over Spain unless there's something very specialized to Spain. But yeah, Germany is going to be your best opportunity probably uh, in, in, in Europe. Miguel would like to know, would you recommend to add Shopify sales to the new product sales on Amazon? Um, there's nothing wrong with setting up a Shopify site. I mean, I recommend everybody, whether it's Shopify or, or WooCommerce or one of those platforms, Shopify is the easiest. Uh, it's, your base plan is, what, 30 bucks a month or something like that. Um, Setting up a Shopify site uh, is good uh, with your brand name, just because there are people that will find you on Amazon uh, and then go Google you to see if you exist, see if you're legit. And having a site there, even if they don't buy from it, is good. But as far as Shopify sales, just understand that it's going to be a small amount. Um, and getting traffic to Shopify is, is a whole different animal. Um, you can lose money to getting uh, sales on Amazon so but you because getting losing money to launch on Amazon can get you rank and can get you onto page one that can then turn into a lot of organic sales on Shopify. You can't lose money because it, uh, if you're running Google ads or, or Facebook ads or whatever to your Shopify and you're losing money, it's not getting you any rank. It's just losing your money. So there are two different ways of uh, advertising, two different ways of getting traffic. So set one up, but uh, I wouldn't focus too much on it because um, it's not going to be much of your business. Uh, Kevin, have you heard of an experience when the account is deactivated and how did you win the appeal and how long does it take? I've never had my account deactivated. Um, I've had products deactivated, 
but I've never had my uh, entire account deactivated. If, if I was to have the entire account deactivated, I would probably reach out to one of the, the services out there that specializes in that because they've seen a lot of the plans of actions. And they know what works and what doesn't work and how to do that. I would probably have and engage one of them to, uh, to help me out, even though I might know what I'm doing. Uh, just they, they have the experience and they've seen a lot of it. Um, so the appeal, when you get your entire account taken down, the appeal, I've seen it take a week to six months. So it just depends. So that's, but that's also why I would, I would engage uh, one of these services uh, to help you out. Yakov is asking, are you going to share with us today your new tactic on how to find products, Kevin? Well, right now I use uh, brand analytics pretty heavily uh, to find products. I mean, there's tools out there, you know, like Helium 10 has black box. Some of the other guys have, have their tools. Um, but um, the one that I like the best right now is I start with brand analytics. And then I, I use some uh, other software from some other masterminds I'm in that's not public, uh, that I can take the brand analytics data and then uh, add some stuff on top of that. And I can find some pretty good stuff um, pretty fast. I can usually find a good product opportunity, usually takes me uh, an hour to two hours to find. Uh, that's just to find the opportunity. And then it's gotta get vetted, you know, gotta find the supplier uh, and make sure the pricing works. So, and usually out of those that I find, um, about half or more get eliminated just because the Either we can't source it properly or can't get it at a good price or there's some other reason that it, it gets scratched. What is the best way to get quick support from Amazon seller support? Um, the best way is to actually talk to someone that's in the United States or Costa Rica. Uh, so one of, the, one of the tricks a lot of people use is to uh, ask for the Spanish support, actually speak Spanish, uh, and you'll get switched to Costa Rica, which is a little bit higher level team. Or you can ask for the catalog team, uh, which is... Um, sometimes in Costa Rica, sometimes in uh, South Dakota. Those are some of the best. Um, the worst, uh, as most of you know, is the support that comes out of India. Uh, it's sometimes you're going in circles and uh, pulling your hair out. Um, but that's, I mean, the best way actually is if you have someone at Amazon. If you have a contact at Amazon, uh, you have a um, that's you know an account rep or something like that. That's the best way. But most people don't have that. All right, we have a question about services. Where to find search by search find by service? Those are the rebate services um, that that do a lot of that kind of stuff. Like re, um, there's there's software tools um, that that will do that kind of stuff. Um, but then there's, there's rebate services. So if you just search, I don't want to plug a bunch of them here, but if you search uh, um, Amazon rebate services, you should come up with a bunch of them. Or post in one of the Facebook groups, um, you, you should see 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 a bunch of those also uh, Bilal you could uh, check uh, the video on YouTube channel of orange click where we uh, interviewed Marcel from uh, Intelli sales company so they do influencer marketing for Amazon products and there I think they also use this kind of techniques so you can check for the video in our library uh, next question SRD, have you noticed recent problems on listings with big drops on all keywords? For me, from the top 10 positions, it falls to position 32 and back for, from one hour to another. No, from hour to hour on all keywords. Solutions? Yeah, that, you know, if, you, if you're if you using tools like Helium 10's uh, keyword tracker, you'll see big, sometimes big fluctuations where you might be on page one, spot three, then all of a sudden you're on page 32, or position 32, like he says. Some of that's Amazon messing around with the algorithm, testing different things, and there's not much you can do with that. Some of it is regional. So depending on um, how you're logged in, how your cookies are set, um, how Amazon's acknowledging your browser, what Augustus looks at uh, could be different results than what I looked at. And it's also based on your previous search history, what account you're logged into. Like say if you have a personal account and you have a business account on Amazon, you're checking your, your stats and you're logged into your business account, which you've never really bought anything on Amazon versus your personal that could affect um, how you appear there's a number of things but usually it's Amazon uh, screwing around uh, testing different things or, or testing different algorithms um, and kind of sucks uh, but not much you can do about that Susan do you know any company that can help with crowdfunding on Kickstarter Kirsten Ross is somebody k-i-e-r-s-t-e-n I think um, um, that uh, specializes in that. You might look Google Google that name. Um, 
and uh, she has like even I think like a little course or, or something on that all right I'm starting and I want to try and learn before uh, to register a brand but now how can I avoid brand error when a place not available or SA or generic brand field how can I create a listing without brand um, you should be able to, to do it with the NA and if that's giving you an error you'll have to open a ticket with Amazon and get them to give you permission to do it Okay, let's see. Peter wants to know. Kevin mentioned something earlier about looking at your brand analytics to learn about your customer demographics. Can you explain? Yeah, if you have brand if if you have brand analytics, if you go in there on the left hand side, there's some uh, three or four different little uh, options: repeat purchase behavior, market ba basket analysis, which will, that's how you can find uh, products if you want to extend your brand. Item comparison, alternative purchase behavior, and demographics. And if you click on that demographics, they'll tell you like household income of your customers. They'll tell you uh, their education level, their gender, uh, marital status, and a, a few more things. Uh, and you can look at that over a range. Um, you need to have, I, I believe, also a storefront set up uh, for most of this to work. Um, not all, I mean, for demographics, but for some of it, uh, the purchase behaviors and stuff, uh, like market basket analysis will show you like, what if they're buying this ASIN? What else are they buying of other people's? Like I'm, I'm looking at one of mine right now. That's in the health and beauty category, and uh, I can see that uh, I have some, some. I have a, a set of items that there's uh, quite a few in a set, and someone's buying my competition. That's a, a travel size of that, along with my product. So that means that maybe I should consider uh, a travel size as, as a variation or uh, an extension of my brand. Another product I'm seeing that someone's buying a, a tiger on tiger do something pre-sharped uh, number two pencils along with my other item so maybe you know I, I take a deeper dive and see if it's worth uh i probably wouldn't do it but worth looking at pencils or something along those those lines uh, but what that also tells me is i'm looking here at what the third most popular item is and i'm seeing that okay these are people back to school people buying certain things so maybe i need to target a back to school package or bundle or something so that's where you, you find it in brand analytics all right. Hi, Kevin. Will you recommend to hire a third-party inspector just for initial 100 pieces order? Yes. I would never let anything leave your factory without being inspected. For a 100-piece order, you could have uh, the factory, before you pay the balance, you could have them actually air freight, uh, you know, airship you over one, but they're going to pick one that's... Uh, it depends on the price. You know, if this is a... If these are a dollar... Or uh, two dollars each, um, you know, two hundred bucks. Just have them ship them to you, so you can check them. Don't ship them straight to Amazon. Have them ship them to you because you don't want to pay two hundred dollars for an inspection if it's two hundred dollars order. But if that's a several thousand dollar order, then yeah, I would hire an inspection company. But if it's not, I would just probably have it sh shipped to me so I can take a look at it. Because the worst thing you want to do is send that into Amazon and then start getting a bunch of bad reviews. It'll kill you really fast. What are the best strategies to increase the amount of reviews left by customers? Put out a good product that solves a problem. That's not what you want to hear. You want to hear what's the what's the hack or the trick or what software tool can I use? Um, there, there's put out a good product that solves a problem. Um, if you want to do it legitimately, if you want to influence it, you know that's where people start putting inserts and they start offering incentives and stuff, and that's against the rules. A lot of people are using follow-up emails or they're using the new way where Amazon will allow you to request reviews. In my experience, those are negligible uh, in, in increasing your reviews. You, you get a few off of that maybe. So I'm not saying don't do that, uh, but where you actually get reviews is either piss somebody off and put out a crappy product that they just got to tell the world about or the reverse of that. You, you, you delight them, you surprise them, you over deliver. You, know? um, you add something in there um, one of the best things you can do is add a free gift that they weren't expecting. Um, you know, if they were, if they ordered a, uh, I don't know, a hair straightener and, and you're listing, you have a hair straightener and then you're showing all about the hair straightener <clears throat> and maybe you have as a variation, um, hair straightener or in case anybody that wants just a hair straightener, you just send them a case. You don't tell them you're going to do it, but they, they get it with the case and with a little note in there. Thanks for ordering us. We just thought we would upgrade your order at no cost to uh, include the case. Something that's totally not in your listing anywhere, unexpected. Those are people that you're going to delight. They're going to be happy, and they're going to be more likely to to leave you a review. Little things like that can, are, you know, there's there's one of my suppliers. I order a 
boxes from and labels. Mm -hmm. uh, and every time they send in, they, they put a little package of M&Ms, M&M candies in, in there. And you know what? I order from them sometimes just to get the little package of M&Ms. Uh, you know, I could go buy one of those for 25, 50 cents at the store because they're little like Halloween size ones. And, but um, it, it's just those little things add up. And a lot of people don't do that. They're just all about the money uh, and all about the tricks. Uh, be a good company and put out a good product uh, and reviews will come. And talking about reviews, LD wants to know what's the strategy for initial reviews besides Vine and early reviewer program? Um, those are the best two, um, really, uh, to do it legitimately. Um, and it's it's sell. I mean, the, the next thing is you got to sell enough. I mean, the average review rate on Amazon, depending on the product, is 1% to 5%. So you, it, a lot of people, they sold 20 20 items, and they they wish they had 10 reviews, and it's just not going to happen. It's It's volume. So just start selling enough, and the review, the reviews will come. I mean, we have a product right now that has um, we launched in June has about 360 reviews, or sometimes now they're just ratings; they're not even a review. And I think we we've sold about uh, on that particular one about 30,000 units. Um, so it's that's a you know like a one two percent review rate. Now we've done no vine program. I did do the early reviewer program, but that's it, and everything else just naturally coming. Andres says that in the niche he wants to get into is populated with Chinese sellers. What would be a way to gauge or find out if they are using any black hat tricks to rank on page one? What suspicious activities could I check? Um, well, there's a lot. Um, one is uh, if the, that category, most of the products on page one have a lot of reviews and they got a product that's on page one organically that has one or two reviews. Another would be looking at the reviews and seeing if the reviews are all for that product or if they're for something else. Uh, you know, maybe the first couple pages for that product, but the rest of them are for a totally different product. Um, another one, uh, I mean, that's that's a couple, but I would, if it's heavily popular with Chinese sellers, I would be care cautious going into that market because they're going to have a price advantage over you every time. So they're going to be able to beat you on price almost every single time uh, just because they're local. Um, so that that's, I would be cautious with that. Vino would like to know importance of influencer campaigns for the products. For product launch, it's not important at all. For building a brand, it can help you get going. But the influencer influencer campaigns are overhyped and overrated. Most of the people that are teaching that stuff aren't selling on Amazon. Uh, they're, they're teaching to sell a course or something. Or there's some people out there that, that think it's cool and think it's something, but they don't actually, they've never really done it themselves or had success themselves. So. Influencer campaigns, the right influencer can make, can do a world of difference for you. Um, but uh, it's overrated, um, in my opinion. Sasha is asking, would you recommend selling products that were originally launched on an account that is now suspended on a brand new account? Um, if it's, it's so it's your product and you got suspended and now you're going to relaunch on a brand new account, the, the same product. If it's in you selling again, um, you're probably asking for trouble. Uh, I would probably not do that. I got the brand registry recently. I'm preparing a plus now. I try to create storefront in the meantime, but when I want to create store, it tells me that next message, no products listed. Any advice? Um, I'm not Very. sure. Yeah, I don't know what they're. Okay. No, no I don't. I don't know that that one. Too, too specific. That's... All right. Guy says if seller if sellers are not allowed to sell in the two different categories, so how practically sellers build multi brands? No, you can sell in as many categories as you want. I don't know, guy, where you get that. You're allowed to sell in as many categories as you want. Um, you just you just can't have multiple seller accounts. And my company is uh, Kevin Company Number One. I can't start Kevin Company Number Two and also sell supplements. Amazon's not going to like that. But if I can on Company One, I can sell supplements and dog treats and automotive parts if I want to. It doesn't matter. How can I get more material from you on Amazon? Do you have a course or something similar? We already answered this question two times. Check the links below. And it's called Freedom Ticket, Ticket as a keyword, and Helium Ten has it as a free. Uh, addition if you become Helium 10 user. Would you please spell the name of Kristen Ross for Kickstarter? That's right, Kirst. Uh, I think it actually, 
It's Kristen Ross, I believe that. Yeah, I believe that's correct. I think it's mm -hmm. actually with a, a H Y N or something like that. Um, let me look real quick. I can get, while you read the next question, I'll double check. Yeah, the next question is about Saudi Arabia. Do you recommend to join? Uh, it's a pretty small market. Um, I mean, it's yeah, it's 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 pretty smart market, small market. Yeah, her her name is uh spelled K R Y S T E N, K R Y. S T E N Ross R O S S. Okay, uh, Augustus, you got four K. Congrats, five K. Yeah, we got five thousand <laughs> subscribers. Right. Cool, nice. All right. Thank you, Kevin, for making this possible. Does purchases through share links give more ranking juice versus search find buy? I don't know the algorithm if they give more or less or the same, but they definitely help. Uh, so I. Uh, um, I don't. I don't know if it's more or less, but it definitely helps. Question: Once I rank for long tail keywords and then change the title and bullets to start ranking for higher search volume keywords, then I lose ranking for long tail searches. Uh, no, not if you have sales on them. If you have enough sales on those long term ones, um, and you change them, that you take them out. I would try not to take them out of the title, but if you have to, just because of space. Make sure they're in your first couple bullet points, um, and you sh as long as you've got a decent amount of sales and a, a history on them in the past, um, you should be okay. I mean, there's a keyword. We we have a product that uh, had had a major keyword in it that had like 700,000 searches a month. Big keyword, and we had to take that out of the title because Amazon considers that keyword uh, an EPA keyword, a pesticide keyword. And so we had to take that out of the title after about a month of selling and uh, couldn't put it in the listing anywhere else. Uh, otherwise, the system might flag it again as a and suspend the product again. This product's been suspended like three times uh, for, for this reason. And so we had to just completely eliminate it from the listing. But we're still ranked on page bottom of page one for that keyword um, because we got a lot of sales on it. So, uh, no, you, you, as long as you have a history um, and it's a, it's a good history that's competitive with everything else for that keyword, you should be fine. Okay, someone is on your Freedom Ticket course and uh, he's missing information about Path to Wholesale. Do you have any recommendation for other courses? Yeah, I don't cover wholesale um, at all in there. Um, I just don't, uh, it's just such small margins on wholesale. I don't really focus on that. There's a, there's, there are some courses out there that some people that teach that, uh, but um, I, I'm not, I can't recommend. I haven't seen the course, I haven't gone through the course, so I, I can't recommend it without knowing about it isn't uh, rebates against amazon policy you mentioned them earlier no rebates are okay rebates with review requests and reviews are against amazon policy but rebates are okay what do you think about amazon japan have you launched there and how do you go about things considering the language yeah amazon japan i have not launched there but i think it's a good opportunity um it's Number three, I think, or number two or number three. It's U.S. number one. I think Germany's number two, and Japan and U.K. are like three and four or some, something like that. But it's the big four markets, all the ones that Amazon sells in, are, are U.S., Germany, uh, J Japan, and U.K. And so uh, Japan is a good market. I've heard good things about it, I, but I have not uh, done it. You do have to translate. You have to have local support. You have to have uh, – lo uh, there's a guy named Nick um, – I forget. I'm forgetting his last name. Nick Cuts, Nick Cuts, or something like that. Yeah, that uh, that's uh, an American that's living over there. Been living there for 30 years or something like that. That kind of can help you. Um, I think he was just recently on the uh, Serious Sellers podcast as well. Um, and I think you might have interviewed him or he's something. Yeah, I think his website is the Japan Guy or something. Search the Japan Guy Amazon and you will find. Here's an interesting question: How to get go from seven figures to eight figures? Um, probably add more products. The, the best way to go from seven to eight is extend your product line, um, either um, by adding variations to what you have, uh, if that makes sense, or by adding more products. That's tip, really the only way to, to really do that, or to add more channels. I mean, to go beyond Amazon and add more channels. Uh, but remember, going from seven to eight is a big jump um, in, in logistics and people and everything. Can you put website on your packaging? Oh yeah, sure, of course. 
So the last question, let's take it uh, more general. What are the best practices for tile tilt and bullets? And then we will finish this one and a half hours. Uh, the title needs to have the keywords. It needs to be readable, number one, not just keyword stuff. And it needs to have the keywords that you're targeting uh, at that moment. Whatever keywords that you feel the ideally get three to five of your best keywords in exact phrase order uh, in that title that you're targeting. That that would be the number one for the title. Uh, and then hopefully the title is readable and it actually has some benefit copy to it. As far as the bullets, um, I would your first three bullet points are the most important, especially the first two. So your first bullet, make sure those also have additional keywords in them and phrase order that you're targeting. Make sure those actually show why your product is better than the competition. You should be have read the reviews of your competition, see what people are complaining about, and address those. You know, your product is the only one on Amazon that's not hot to the touch or whatever. Counter any because you got to remember people are searching, shopping around. So they may be look, looking at yours and looking at someone else's. Why is yours better? Don't just list. Uh, you know it, it's rated this much and it it's made of uh, silver and it's just but why uh you you gotta you gotta s convince people why yours is better so use your bullet points to do that and make sure you include uh keywords in there and a lot of people don't read the bullet points so make sure your top top two or three differentiators at least are also in your images some what one or more of your images should actually show when people scrolling through why yours is better than the competition so if you have more questions, go to Freedom Ticket uh, course by Kevin King, which is bundled uh, for the Helium 10 users. And Kevin, do you have there any kind of webinars for your members who are going through your course? Uh, well, we have the Helium 10. Uh, uh, yeah, well, for a Freedom Ticket, yeah, there's something called Freedom yeah. Ticket Extra, where, uh, where every Monday I do something like this, where I answer questions for an hour to hour and a half live. Uh, for Freedom Ticket Extra members. And then I, I do also, I don't work for Helium 10. I'm not part of Helium 10. I just uh, have a, a partnership with them. And I do their advanced training called Helium 10 Elites, which every month we bring in uh, advanced uh, advanced people to talk about advanced tactics. And then I do the Billion Dollar Seller Summit, which you came to, uh, you are my guest at last year, um, that uh, we I do uh, for high-level sellers, really high-level sellers. And... Uh Let's mention again Product Savants, if it's relevant. Uh, right. Sure, yeah. Product Savants is uh, if you're an advanced seller already doing over $50,000 a month, that might be something uh, that's, uh, that you could take a look at where we help you uh, introduce you to opportunities. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Venus says thank you. And Dia says thank you. And a lot of other people were saying thank you. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate your time. Uh, you, those who are watching, you will find all the rela related or relevant links below in the description. Thank you, Kevin, and bye-bye. All right. Take care, everybody.